Welcome to another edition of the Defoe Show with Luby. Brought to you in part by Water Cleanup of Florida. Really excited to have Water Cleanup of Florida a part of the Defoe Show and Luby family. We welcomed them last week into the fold and really excited to be working with them. Are you a South Florida property owner with an insurance claim? Are you dealing with water, mold, or fire damage? Looking for a reputable, fully licensed, insured, and certified contractor? Hey, we have your answer right here. Water Cleanup of Florida. It's here for you 24 hours a day again. Last week, my wife and I dealt with a fridge issue. I had to wait till the next day to get in touch with someone. And that, that delayed us to the point where we didn't really get a working fridge until Sunday or Monday. So we went a few days without a refrigerator because of that idea that we didn't have a 24-hour service available well, you will with Water Cleanup of Florida. Water, disaster can strike anytime. And what's great about Water Cleanup of Florida is not only they will find your issues, whether it be flood, mold, fire, whatever the issue, they'll find it and they'll fix it. With over 60 years of expired, with over 60 years of combined experience between Michael, Robert, and all their great associates at Water Cleanup of Florida. Call Michael anytime on his personal cell at 954-579-0356. Just mention five reasons, and you will receive a free inspection during business hours. That's 954-579-0356, or visit our website at wcufl.com. Follow us as well on Facebook and Instagram, and please check out the over 65 five-star reviews on Google to see what past customers have to say about Water Cleanup of Florida. Water Cleanup of Florida, we clean up your schmutz. Well, this was a weekend more of schmutz cleaning up as the Miami Heat we talked about last week cleaned up their number one seed, locked it in. The Florida Panthers are still fighting for the number one seed, but have a nice lead, and actually going after the Colorado Avalanche for the number one seed overall in the NHL, the Marlins, Batted off their season, going one and two against the playoff returning San Francisco Giants. Went out west. wasn't great, but every game was a one-run game. They did take one, and we're in it, so it was an interesting start. But today, we talk with John and Jemmy. It is another Dateline Dolphins, and John and Jemmy joined us, as he does each and every week. And we talked a little bit about Tua, our confidence level in Tua, and those pesky Tom Brady rumors that keep Persisting again right now, the Devo Show with the Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network, joined by John Kinjimi. All right, maybe besides like members of his immediate family, uh, wife and uh, kids, uh, nobody has a more direct pipeline. And that being said, <clears throat> to Dan Marino, the new John Kinjimi, which is another reason that we figure that you probably have this stuff long before anybody else. So uh, not, I'm flipping not, channels not, last night. Not yes. all of it. Not all of it in, in terms of people that are circle of friends, but. That that's that trust you have with with people. I mean, yeah. you're you're at a golf tournament. And you're with ten Hall of Famers. And everybody's having a good time. I'm not going to be in the corner. Wow, so and so did this, and so and so did that. That's not my business. No, but no. other people want to know, and they they try to befriend you to get that information. And that's where you get into that gray area where you don't want to be, or well, at least uh, I don't want to yeah. be. I'm a big fan of CBS News. Uh, that, that's my uh, preferred news uh, because of my uh, admiration on the national level of the great Scott Pelley, who uh, now is just uh, on uh, 60 Minutes and Special Projects. And uh, brilliant again last night with his interview with uh, Zelensky, which, uh, you know, I mean, who's walking in there in the first place, right? Yeah. Uh, guns and this and that. I mean, uh, you know, a great, great job. But so, so I'm flipping around and, uh, and there's Jim Barry. And I didn't get to see this piece because uh, uh, I got involved in uh, doing something else. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, there's Danny, Dan Marino, the great Dan Marino, with his arm around Tua, Tua yep. John Kajemi. And uh, so we need to know from our uh, Dolphin Insider, what's going on there? I don't uh, know. I mean, I mean, I think Tua had an event. Tua had like a major event for Boys and Rock. Girls Club. Yeah. What is he oh, telling okay. Tua? What, what is he saying? What's going on? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't now, see... Is this going to be the year? I, I think I, I, I just want to have that feeling. I really do. I hope Danny's cutting off his right arm and he's sewing it to Tua's left side and, <laughs> he could, you know, get the ball downfield. How's that? Uh, so uh, I don't know. I, could I, Danny I know still throw for 60,000 yards? I mean, uh, you know, a season, if he was around today, it would be unbelievable, wouldn't it? Well, I think Dan and a couple others could do it with the rules today. You know, it was tough uh, in the eighties and the nineties with the different rule changes and, and guys, uh, you know, knocking out wide receivers across the middle and, and knocking quarterbacks down, you know, with three steps after he's thrown the football with no call. Um, I, I think there's a lot of changes that are helping 
uh, you know, athletes and helping, you know, different positions on the field excel a different in a different way. That's making these numbers a little bit elevated than what they what they would have been back then. Oh, defensive banks uh, with uh, Can't do you know, Clayton and Duper. I mean, uh, they were practically, uh, you know, making moves that you would see only on Dancing with the Stars. I mean, <laughs> just holding on to the guy uh, the entire time. And uh, I, I think Danny uh, believes this in his heart of hearts that he would throw for 6,000 yards a season if uh, if he was in the league today. Uh, with the, oh, I'm uh, sure he North. does. I'm, I'm sure a couple of guys, you know, feel that way. But, you know, the game has changed in a good way, protecting the quarterbacks, protecting the wideouts. I think it's harder on the on the de- defense in terms of covering these guys that have, you know, elite track speed where you, you used to be able to get your hands on them at the line of scrimmage and ride them for five or eight yards. And, you know, somebody's clotheslining somebody across the middle, they get a 15-yard penalty, no big deal, but that guy's out of the game. And, and now you have one less headache to worry about. Or, you know, you're not trying to knock a quarterback out so you – not only hit him late, but you land on him with 340 pounds and you're separating his shoulder and he's out for, you know, six or seven weeks. Those types of injuries really don't happen. Uh, you know, you can't get at their legs. You can't get at the, can't touch the helmet. as The a Brady rules. All the Brady rules. So yeah. a lot of things have changed to, to help the game, but it's made it different and it's made it a lot easier on offense. Would, would uh, Dan Marino have benefited if they were making the I, – I guess they couldn't do it because they would have considered it like another shoe of bias when it came to uh, making no rules in the National Football League. But he, he would have benefited greatly from the Brady rules, would he not? Dan Marino, where, uh, oh, you know, if yeah. he fumbled the ball, they ruled it no fumble. If they <laughs> had a ball picked off, there was some reason that they had to automatically blow the play dead and, uh, you know, uh, come up with a new rule to protect the man. Uh, it would have been great. Uh, all right, uh, let's let's get out a, a new uh, instrument here, a uh, measuring stick, a barometer here uh, on the show, uh, the beliefometer, if you will. All right, so uh, and we have to go around the horn on this thing because uh, – I, I want to believe, and I don't know that I'm convinced yet, and I don't really want to be, like, reluctant to embrace this idea, uh, but I believe that Tua is going to show, like, marked improvement this year as uh, a very efficient operator, and not, not necessarily like a game manager, but, but a very efficiently operating catalyst in this Mike McDaniel offense. But with the elements that he has in place, I think he's going to succeed. So I'm going to say I'm hitting the beliefometer at about an eight. Hmm. Wow, I'm going to go high on that, an eight. So uh, now, Luby, I was you tend to be seven. very uh, you know, cynical, <laughs> pessimistic. Yeah, you know you love Tua, Tua though, you so we Tua. have to qualify that. I mean, you're a biased juror here. Uh, where do you stand on a scale of zero to ten? Are you pinning it into the round on the beliefometer? When it comes to Tua coming up this year. Well, you freaked me out because I was going to say seven, but I was probably already at a seven. And all I've done is defend the crap out of him this entire offseason when people say stupid stuff, not looking at the actual stats or reality, just looking at three highlights from Patrick Mahomes. So if you're at eighth, and I'm probably at a nine because where where, where people think these moves – suited the big arm quarterback. They're actually wrong. Tyreek Hill, of his 111 catches, again, I've said this statistic, only, I think, like 15 or 18 traveled in the air 20-plus yards. So meaning the other 90 were all literally where Tua is as good as anyone in the league. Like, whatever you want to say about Tua, no one questions his accuracy, his timeliness, and his pocket awareness. Again, he was the most pressured of any quarterback in the league and top three least sacked. So just think, if he has time and how his actual weapons, which he didn't, he, his receivers were top three in drops and games missed and, like, all these things that he won't have this year because he'll play as long as he's not a dumbass off the field, which you do have to consider with him. He plays. Like, he's on the field. Waddle plays. He's on the field. Gesicki actually, even though he can be inconsistent, plays. He's on the field. Like, now they have real running backs that are good as pass catchers. Like, they have everything that's... Sh- People made fun of Tua because he had a lot of talent at Alabama. That's what he has now. So isn't that what he's great at is playing with talent, orchestrating an offense? So, I mean, if you're at an eight and you were very eh about Tua, then I have to be at a nine. Like, I'm at a nine. I really believe this year he's going to entrench himself as a top 15 to a top 10 quarterback. Well, All right. Looking, what do you think? Those looking, are high numbers. Very high. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I I agree with you guys. Uh, if oh, we're looking great. at the – the improvement of the quarterback play, which only had to get, you know, a little bit better. I I think it was more consistency than anything. You know, we talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago when the dolphins went through that bad stretch 
last season. It was because Tua kind of fell off. You know, you, you can't run the football. You get a little pressure. You throw it a little inconsistent, and it turns not only into an incompletion, but it's an interception mm-hmm. going the other way. Those things seem to deflate offenses, the football teams, and it carries over into other things. And that's where, why you lose five, six, seven games in a row when you continue to make those mistakes. Now you bring in a head coach and you bring in uh, free agents that are going to improve the positions of weakness. It can only elevate what Tua is going to do on offense, at least on paper. When you look at this team on paper, you say, is it better? Is it, is it as good as it's been under Brian Flores over the past three seasons? Absolutely. You've got better on the offensive line. You've got better at wide receiver. You've got better at quarterback. You've retained and re-signed a tight end, a defensive uh, a pass rusher. You, you, you get a couple of guys that are in the secondary that are as good in tandem as anybody in the league. You have young safeties. You've got athletic linebackers. You've got ath- linebackers that are run stuffers. So when you look at the team around Tua, which is what we're, we're saying, you know, can he elevate his play? Absolutely. I think it, it sets up as good for a quarterback in, in any of those powerhouse teams in the AFC, you know, with all the quarterbacks moving from the NFC to the AFC, you needed to stockpile, you know, your, your weaknesses and improve those weaknesses. They were glaring and they did that. So my meter's up close to eight, nine. I mean, it can even go pin it to the wall because <laughs> giving it a chance, my heart be still. <laughs> he's got a chance now. He's got a chance, as Luby said, to kind of morph into what he did at Alabama. It's get the ball out quick, be accurate, don't turn it over, and, and let your playmakers do the work for you. So he's good at that, and he's very good at that. And he's shown that as not only as a collegiate but as a pro. His accuracy is high. Um, his percentage is good. The lack of, of, of turning the football over within the pocket and being able to escape, not getting the ball stripped, uh, those, those things are good. And if he continues at a high level with this new offense, that's going to be suited to run the football as well as get to I- accentuate the things he does well. I, I see, I see no weakness on paper. It's got to, you know, trans transfer itself to the field. And we'll see that in OTAs. We'll see that at training camp, see it in preseason, but most importantly, you hope it carries over into a very difficult schedule for the dolphins in the AFC, because every time I look, and I'm trying to put teams in the playoffs, I get over eight easy. Oh, I get yeah, to nine, like 10, 11, <laughs> and then you're trying to figure out who to take out. Yeah. All right, Livia, uh, number one, uh, save this or have Amy store this somewhere in the archives. I and then uh, when we all look Mark. like bozos midway through the season, <laughs> we can bring this up and well, uh, you know, remind people talking, that they're, yeah, we're accountable we're, we're for what we're We're talking about yeah. the chance of where he was on, in this team Compared to what they've stockpiled now, you have to say Man. his chances, you know, they were five of 10 over the last two years. They've got to be at least, you know, seven in a hook to nine in a hook somewhere in there. It had to improve for him to excel at, at quarterback. How can we could go out there and be fives? Two has got to, you know, raise you his could. level I mean, you could probably to, be like to go six, to, you maybe. know, eight, nine and, and <laughs> yeah. potentially higher. <laughs> Luby throwing a rock. I'm not going no, five, Chuck. No, I mean, no. and me, I have. I, I never was very good at passing a football, no. even though I was decent at uh, most sports. But uh, quarterbacking was not not going to be my thing. Had the mind for it, maybe, but uh, not the arm. Uh, a couple of things struck me though while, while well, you were. You know uh, what? Everybody yeah. has their strong suits, FIFO. Yeah, uh, no doubt. Uh, all ahead. right, Luby, you have some, but I, I did want to say uh, when you were uh, you know addressing this, uh, I'm thinking. Uh, you know, Brian Flores seemed to hate his own offense for some reason. <laughs> I, I just got the feeling that, right, he always had, like, two offensive coordinators. And uh, then the next year he would, you know, come in and say, yeah, fire those guys, they're bozos, and they bring in two more. And, and he just seemed to be – and the surprising thing is, and I heard the stat, I, I guess it to be, you know, somewhat accurate, that uh, the Dolphins were among the higher-scoring teams in the league, even though we thought their offense sucked. So um, th- this can only be good. And, and then you also know this, John, that, that you don't need to be wide open 20 yards down the field if you're one of these uh, playmaking speed merchants like we have in, in Waddle and Tyreek Hill. I say we know because I'm on the bandwagon. Of course. But, no, um, yeah, like absolutely. the Dolphins do. But um, you you just need this guy to, to be the slightest bit open and, and deliver the ball quickly. And that's 
this accentuates what the, you know, uh, it takes a lot of the flaws out of Tua's game, and I think it accentuates what he does well. Which Well, look, look at the receiving core that you have. You, you could go down the line, and exactly what you said, you could apply that to Mike Kosicki. You could apply that to Preston Williams. You could apply that to Waddle. You could apply that to Wilson. Yep. Uh, all these guys, w- whether they're small and, and fleet of foot or they're taller guys with huge catch radius, it only needs to be close. Yep. You know, and if you've got guys crossing, you know, underneath with that type of speed and man coverage or zone and sitting down and be able to make a guy miss and take it another 15 yards, this offense sh- should get chunks of yardage in the passing game. And if it's complemented a little bit more consistently with a run game and lack of pressure for Tua, maybe maybe he doesn't have to get rid of the football as quickly <laughs> yeah. and he lets things, you know, another half second develop. He's got a chance to be even that much more uh, on target, ball location, you know, all the little things, setting your feet and being able to to throw in rhythm, which is very important to, to Tua, I believe. I think he gets in trouble when he's out of rhythm in terms of his feet don't match his eyes and, and his body in, in the pocket. And that's when he doesn't, doesn't have the full velocity on the football to be able to get it where he, he believes his mind can get the football. So a lot of those things are – kind of, you know, piggyback on each other. And I think the Dolphins have improved around him so much that it's going to be better for him in all those areas. Off of this, and that's the thing with this conversation, is I actually, being such a believe high guy, I don't consider this situation. I'm going to ask you, but Defo joked, let's say it all goes awry because you never know. Uh, and the one question with Tua that I even play into is his health. He's had health issues literally, even at Alabama. He had stuff before the hip and after the hip and his entire time here with the hip and even the ankle. And There's always something. He's a smaller guy. He is. Um, okay, let's say it goes awry. Not only the rumors, but there's actually, I've seen people say, you know, next year it's going to be Peyton and Brady. What are your thoughts? You're around the organization more than we are. What are your thoughts on this? To me, it's ridiculous, but this idea that the Miami Dolphins, the hope is to get Tom Brady at quarterback, and this is just sort of a feeling it out year, but in the end, that's where they're going to be going. I think it, it could be reality. I, I mean, he's going to be a free agent next year. Why, why wouldn't he? He's building a house in Indian Creek, Indian Creek and yeah. his, his wife wants to be on this side to, to raise the kids around a more, uh, you know, cultural I, I, type of environment and, and why not? If he's if he can still play and they're going to pay him to play for maybe one or two years, you know, that window with Tyreek Hill and, and the guys that you signed, it's not very long. I mean, the, the contract goes for a long time, but until you got to pay him $43 million for one season or whatever that number is in the third year of his contract, the, the window's kind of short. So you're going to have to win and win now. So if it doesn't happen this season uh, with two at quarterback for whatever, you know, injury, lack of product productivity, uh, defense not as good as we think, uh, tough division, you know, can't beat Buffalo, with all those th- scenarios, you're going to have to make a change. And you've got Teddy Bridgewater this year for an insurance policy in case things uh, go off the rails with, with, you know, consistency or injury. You have a guy that can step in and, and probably do a very good job. But I think that's not out of the realm of possibility of having – Brady come in for one or two seasons. If he gets through this next season healthy and he's a free agent, why not play in your backyard where you're going to, you know, put stakes in as your, as your home residence. Should be playing by then in the backyard in Indian Creek, yeah, there, right on the water uh, with the kids. I mean, come on. So. throwing <laughs> a ball to Giselle. I mean, uh, here he is at 52. Can you believe this guy? What a physical specimen. Hey, he, uh, doesn't, he doesn't play like he's 44 no, or 45, doesn't. whatever he is. He doesn't I guess play he's going to be 45 this He'll year. He'll be 45, so, uh, and it's annoying. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, 45, today's 45 is what? Uh, yesterday's uh, 35. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, 28. But it is with you, John Kajemi. I don't know. I mean, uh, if you ever divulge your age here on the it. program, nobody will believe it. That, that's for sure. Uh, all right, uh, always a pleasure, my friend. Uh, it was great uh, having you on. All righty, so we did the Tua Believometer. And again, as any of you have followed us the last few years, I've been highly on Tua without talent. So obviously, I had to continue to be even higher. Defo actually sort of confused me by being pretty high on Tua and in the belief meter And Drunk and Jamie is right there, if not higher, has a lot of belief in Tua Tagovailoa. Now, when I brought up the Tom Brady rumors, to his point, he said, look, if things fall apart, then yes, why wouldn't the Dolphins go after Tom Brady? I don't want that. I hate Tom Brady with a passion. I admit that I'm a 
South Florida fan through and through. I'm a Dolphin fan through and through. And I get a look in the past. The Dol- my sports teams have gotten players I didn't like. And then once they joined my team, I rooted for them. Tom Brady is a little different in the sense that the hatred goes over 20 years. And it's the Patriot. Like, it's hatred. Like, the way most Dolphins fans hate Patriots, Tom Brady, Belichick, it's strong. So I do not want to see him in a Dolphins uniform. So not only I believe in Tua, I'm hoping that belief in Tua proves true. Tua succeeds. Mike McDaniel succeeds. And all these rumors go far, far away. We shall see. Thank you to Drunk and Jimmy. Always brought to you by Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill of Key Largo. Hopefully, if you miss anything, check us out more. 7 to 9, every Monday through Friday. Just Google The Defo Show, D-E-F-O, and our exclusive content podcast, More South Florida, influence a little bit today, on Believe Network. Today we talk with Grant Long, long time Miami Heat great, talking about the Dolphins' future. Well, right now the present, the Miami Heat, are the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, awaiting the playing game to see who they will play. We talk with the current Detroit Pistons analyst about the Miami Heat, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Phoenix Suns, all of the NBA in the playoffs today. On After Hours with DFO and Luby on the Believe Network. Just go Believe.com, search After Hours. And each and every day, right here, the DFO Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Recently, we realized it's not just hurricane season that can hurt us. Any time of year, things can happen to your home or business. And the insurance company can be your friend, but they also can be your enemy. Horizon Public Adjusters, Justina Testa, are here for you to help this process go so much easier. Before you call insurance company, call Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa at 954-809-8752. Would you go into court without an attorney? So why would you go up against an insurance company without Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa? Seven to ten times more money recovered with a public adjuster than if you went on your own. If there's no recovery, there's no fee, give them a call at 954-809-8752. Why go up against insurance companies alone when you can have Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa on your side? Play the ponies in style at Champions, the outstanding simulcasting room at beautiful Hylia Park. Yes, the grand old lady of thoroughbred racing has never been more vibrant, and you can wager on the races from the top tracks around the country while enjoying a cocktail at the Brass Rail Bar or any of the fine food served throughout the facility. If poker is your game, you're covered in style. And you can play all your favorite Vegas-style games, including blackjack, craps, and roulette in Hylia Park's sizzling hot casino. Get a player's card when you walk through the door for all kinds of generous amenities, including our favorite, free play, when you come out to the ultimate casino and entertainment destination, Hylia Park. 